with me for a very special moment. Um, I have waited one year for this package. Inside, I hope, I hope I have a brand new bow by Josephine Tomashow. I commissioned this bow one year ago and it's arrived just now. Josephine Tomashow is the daughter of Stefan Tomashow, who is the granddaddy of the modern French bowmaking school. Many of the great French bowmakers either studied or apprenticed with him um, and learned their craft and honed their craft. Um, I was in a festival in Ireland a few years back and there was a bowmakers exposition at the festival. I was lucky at this festival to meet Mr. Tomasho and at the same time I met his daughter who also happens to be a truly excellent bow maker. And I was so excited to, to play her bows and, and realize that there's a, a very kind of strong family connection in the way that they feel in the hand. Um, and I was pretty excited about that. I ordered one of her bows uh, three years ago and it was silver mounted. I adore that bow. So last year I decided to go ahead and commission another bow and this one is gold mounted and gold is usually reserved for a bow makers more special pieces of wood um, things that they they feel uh, are examples of their top work so i was excited to to order this bow i made a special request also i i have a very long wingspan and i i asked if i could have an extra long viola bow um, you know, just so I could have that, that little extra advantage um, in the upper half. And um, she at first said no. She said she would look into it and think about it. She said no. That was about a year ago, last summer. And just when she sent me this package, she, she told me that she managed to just add a little bit. So I'm really excited to see how this has turned out. So let's get inside. Um, I'm not sure where to start. Well, this is interesting. Um, the box isn't taped. <laughs> uh, maybe that's to get through customs, and customs can be a kind of a wow, a kind of a tricky um, experience because bows have traditionally had um, ivory at the tip, which is um, which is a controlled uh, material now uh, across borders and. The solution that a lot of bow makers use today is to replace that tip. Uh, instead of using ivory, they, they use uh, metal, which is traditional, like a silver or gold, or um, prehistoric mastodon, um, which is actually totally legal and um, doesn't involve the um, killing of any uh, elephants. So um, let's get inside, because I think maybe she was flying under the radar with this one. Um, okay, so we have inside this box a PVC tube, um, and this is, PVC is the material that you would find running wastewater inside your walls, uh, you know, uh, under your sink. Uh, it's a very strong, extraordinarily durable material, and it's really cheap. Um, so we have a PVC pipe, it actually says PVC on it, uh, <laughs> um, but this is one of the, the kind of um, trusted methods of sending bows in the mail. Um, she's added this kind of nice screw top, which is sealed with a kind of an o a rubber o-ring, uh, so this is actually waterproof as well, which is really great. I, I get really nervous with the idea of, sh of shipping something so precious as a bow in the mail, but um, let's see how this turned out. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It made a nice sound, didn't it? That's, that's like the, the popping of a cork. Um, okay. So inside all of this bubble wrap, we have a we have a brand new bow that's, I think, never been played. Okay, so inside the bubble wrap we have another kind of a plastic sleeve. Okay, here comes the, the, the moment. Ta-da! Wow, 
Okay. That's a beautiful bow. Some of the things that I look for uh, when I look at a bow are the way the head is cut. This is a, a very kind of personal choice from a bow maker and it really shows a lot about the quality of their knife work um, and kind of vision as well, their eye. Um, and this is an extraordinary tip. I mean, it's really quite stylish. It's, <laughs> it's got a lot of sweep to it, almost like a swan head. Um, I really appreciate this. I think it's quite beautiful and quite different from my last um, Josephine Thomas Chobot. Um, I'm also looking at kind of the movement of the stick, the camber it's called, how it, how it curves. Um, and this affects the playability of the bow uh, very much and also the way that the bow is cut. This is a round stick um, with uh, kind of a, it seems a, a good kind of hefty substance to it. It's a viola bow, so it looks like it's going to really hold up to very strong playing. It feels strong in the hand. I'm kind of applying pressure with my right hand um, to see kind of how much the bow moves. Um, Pernambuco is an incredible wood. It is so dense that it can sink in water. It's also incredibly flexible. You can almost bend it in half and it won't snap. I wouldn't recommend that though. Um, don't do this at home. <laughs> um, then I'm, I'm looking at the, the handle, the frog, and kind of looking at the work here. Uh, incredibly precise and really beautiful. I, I really appreciate her work. I think she has a very, very fine eye and her execution is really excellent. Um, I always like looking down the line to kind of see how the bow moves. Um, one thing you want to avoid are kind of snake-like ripples in the road. Uh, and this is, this is a remarkably straight stick. So I'm eager to start playing this thing. Let's tighten it up. I'm going to use the screw at the end, tighten it up, oops, a little bit too far, and um, see what it sounds like. Okay, everybody, so this is the moment of truth. I have the bow here, and I'm going to play its first notes. <laughs> I forgot the rosin. Okay, I have some rosin here, and I will also take a quick moment to, to give a little primer on rosining. Rosin is a, kind of an adapted tree sap uh, that we use. It's very sticky and it helps grab the string. And as you just heard, without rosin, I'm not really playing very much. Um, so one thing that's very important to do is to put your thumb over the ferrule of the frog. And if you cover the ferrule of the frog, you won't be a, a chipper. You won't chip your rosin. And that's kind of one of my personal pet peeves. I, I nurse my, my cakes of rosin. These things last me years. Um, and it always hurts me when I see people kind of slamming the rosin into the, into the handle of the frog. So here we go. Um, first rosin. Um, I like rosining a fair amount right at the frog and right at the tip. I like to get a lot in the areas where I'm the least comfortable, um, so that I feel like I have a little bit more control uh, at the extremities of the, of the bow, a little bit towards the middle, although this is the first rosining ever, so it might need a little bit extra. Um, it might seem like I'm putting a lot of rosin on. I don't normally use this much rosin, but um, this is the very first time. So, let's try it. Round two. I still need more rosin, but I can tell you it already feels really nice in the hand. A kind of, um, it's a strong bow actually, I, I really appreciate a strong bow, but it does feel already like it's got good flexibility to it. Um, good spring. It's going to take a little while for the rosin to work in. I might just uh, cut away. Okay, so I have the bow fully rosined and the rosin is kind of played in at this point. So 
Now comes the, the test of the bow, and a lot of you who are um, looking to purchase new bows um, might be wondering what to look for when you, when you try a bow. Um, one of the first things that you do is you, you look over the bow as I did, you kind of ascertain the quality and the condition. You want to make sure that it's a healthy, healthy playing stick. This is an important tool that you're going to spend many, many hours with. Um, and you don't want to be fighting the bow, you don't want to be fighting um, kind of inherent uh, problems with the bow. Um, but after that, after you've made sure that this is a, a good professional tool, um, I think the most important thing to look for with a bow is to listen to the sound, to see what the bow actually sounds like. Uh, every bow has its own sound, its own way to resonate, its own way to, to kind of sing. Um, it brings out different um, proportions of, of uh, of upper, upper overtones and, and lower overtones. Um, it causes a different kind of resonance from your instrument. Um, and you want a bow that's paired with the instrument to bring out the best qualities of your instrument. So, um, here, here we go. make sure that it speaks at the extremities. The to make sure that it can, it can speak with kind of control and precision uh, at the different parts of the bow. Um, I just want to say that this bow feels really fantastic and I'm pretty excited to, to spend a lot of time with it now. Um, and it's also beautiful. I really love that about, um, about the tools that I work with that I spend a lot of time with is I want to be able to every once in a while look down and go, wow, that's just a really incredible um, piece of workmanship. Um, and this, this really is. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to behold. So um, I count this to be a great day. <laughs> Thank you.